mahasiswa kami di Fakultas Ekonomi dan Bisnis Universitas Mualman. Uh, appreciate betul ya, appreciate sekali pada uh, Miss Laura. Oke, okay. uh, alhamdulillah berarti hari ini kita akan mendapatkan pencerahan terutama bagaimana tentang uh, CSR dan CSR ini uh, merupakan hal yang begitu penting terutama kita yang tinggal di Kalimantan Timur. Karena kebetulan saya juga mengurus tentang CSR-nya di Kalimantan Timur. Nah, untuk tujuan itulah harapan kita partisipasi perguruan tinggi, partisipasi orang akademis terhadap CSR ini begitu merupakan sebuah hal yang sangat bagus ya, sangat-sangat dibutuhkan. Karena apa? Karena memang kita sebagai uh, akademisi itu biasanya memberikan apa uh, ini menjembatanin menjembatanin kegiatan-kegiatan CSR itu dan posisi CSR sebenarnya di kantor itu adalah posisi yang diharapkan di Indonesia ya. dia meng, uh, posisinya di urutan hampir di urutan pertama atau kedua ya sebenarnya CSR yang ada beredar karena banyaknya perusahaan-perusahaan nah, multinasional company Kalimantan itu merupakan sebagai uh, akademisi itu ya bahagian yang harus kita pelajari. Jadi hari uh, ini kita sangat menjembatani dengan kehadiran uh, Mrs. Laura Franco yang bisa memberikan pencerahan kepada kita bagaimana praktik-praktik yang bisa dilaksanakan di Europe uh, dan kita bisa adopsi ya well, uh, adopsi yang dilakukan nanti eh, mudah-mudahan itu juga menjadi bagian semangat kita tentang bagaimana mengolah CSR di Kalimantan Timur tidak hanya sekedar di industri-industri yang apa eh, mengolah raw material tapi juga adalah um, on consistent so now I will again oh So give me a second. Can you see now the screen, the full screen? Yes. Very good. Yes. So, all right. I will start. I think I have about uh, 19 minutes, uh, one and a half hour. I will try to stick to the time, okay? So this is me. Uh, as I said, thank you very much for this opportunity to explain corporate social responsibility and social enterprises from, um, let's say, uh, the, the Dutch standpoint. Um, the, the agenda, uh, the topics I will cover, uh, will follow this structure. So I will start with explaining why corporate social responsibility and why social enterprises. Also give a short uh, introduction to the CSR strategic advantages and explain uh, as the last point, the social enterprises as a particular type of social responsibility uh, venture. Okay, so this is the program of this session. And um, well, I, I will start with why social responsibility um, in uh, private organizations, well, can also be in public organizations, why not? In general, uh, one can say that one of the reasons is the the, the fact that um, we have, uh, well, we have um, the responsibility, the ethical responsibility to uh, offer, um, you know, economic uh, uh, conditions, uh, sorry, it's going too fast. Um, so the responsibility towards the society. So we are in many, um, you know, places in the world, unfortunately uh, familiar with this kind of images where we see um, that there are some production facilities of the industry um, that have um, you know, specific uh, uh, emissions of um, uh, substances that can have um, negative effect to the health of people. So for instance, um, you know, it, it was mentioned that Uh, by the World Health Organization, who in 2015, that about 7 million people worldwide die annually because of air pollution. And um, if, um, let's say, things continue 
operating in the way they are uh, they were in 2015, this amount of people can be um, doubled, the double. So 14 million people world, worldwide could have um, uh, could die because of uh, um, uh, air pollution uh, problems. So the, just to say that um, due to the ep epidemiological and toxicological studies done in the past, one can right now uh, correlate the um, emission of some pollutants to the air, to the to water, to the soil, as the main reasons uh, to have health uh, impacts and, and have, you know, people getting sick or even, as I mentioned, uh, people dying because of the pollution generated by uh, particular uh, facilities in the private sector. So this, this calls for uh, action. And, um, you know, uh, this kind of problems have been in a way addressed uh, uh, since uh, 1972, when the book of Silent, Silent Spring um, by Carson um, was uh, released. Uh, in, in her book, she explained uh, the effect of plaguicide pesticides on the environment and how this was uh, changing the uh, physical environment and killing some species in, in mainly water borders. But uh, along the time, you can see there have been different important events um, that showed uh, the effect of our human activities so in the environment, and therefore different, um, you know, manifestations from gr um, green groups, let's say, start uh, move, uh, moving that uh, political agenda towards more uh, in, in a way that uh, the governments and different groups of interest start taking a specific action. Uh, and one important reference, you know, is the Brundtland report in 19, 1987, when the uh, term of social uh, sustainable development was um, um, was uh, released, was uh, writing down. Um, you know, this is a very important moment in the history of the environmental protection because uh, we start talking about uh, being responsible with the way we use the natural resources to produce our services and, and products that wouldn't compromise the, um, the amount of uh, and quality of those resources for future generations. So this was a very important moment. And uh, in a way from this uh, Brundtland report, many other important policy instruments have been developed along the way. Um, and there were other important summits, meetings, uh, uh, talking about the relevance of being more responsible uh, with the way we go with our resources and, and the impacts uh, to the environment. And that, uh, you know, the, the Paris Agreement in 2015 uh, is what, uh, well, we all are living and we, in, and we have uh, the sustainable development goals, we, which were part of this um, um, agreement. So, just to say that um, it's important also to realize that there are uh, bi biological uh, uh, cycles um, explaining, explaining um, how uh, some substances um, are reintegrated in a natural process, let's say, uh, CO2 em uh, emissions uh, substance uh, are important for the carbon cycle of on Earth. But what is relevant for you to realize, for us to realize, is that the uh, ecosystem has a particular capacity to absorb such uh, CO2 uh, uh, emissions. Uh, and at the point we are, we are already, um, you know, went above such uh, capacity of the natural ecosystem to absorb the CO2 
and then the CO2 become an actual problem for, um, for the whole uh, ecosystem. So, um, and that, that particular uh, CO2 emissions um, have been related to something that we all know as climate change. So this uh, carbon, carbon exceeded uh, amount of emissions now are part of the uh, international agenda. Uh, why? Because it has been identified that um, some particular countries we, which have an important uh, industrial development have been contributing um, more than other countries, let's say, to this CO2 emission problem, uh, to the CM, uh, CO2 emission problem, and therefore having a higher impact on the climate change. So you can see here some of those countries uh, that are um, yeah, highlighted. Um, Germany in Europe, China, United States, and well, it's a long list of countries that have uh, an important uh, impact on uh, yes, on the climate change because of the amount of uh, dioxide carbon that uh, they are uh, releasing to the to the atmosphere, and this amount is not uh, possible to be reintegrated. So we basically use in in let's say environmental science some terms like ecological footprint that tries to uh, to uh, quantify how much uh, we as humans in a specific type of activities are impacted, impact, impacting sorry, different uh, elements of the nature, like uh, the amount of forest needed, the amount of energy consumed, uh, the amount of uh, gra grazing land, uh, the amount of uh, fishing, uh, et cetera. So all these are in a way quantified. <laughs> Yes, so Hello? Yes, Laura, you can continue. I'm sorry about uh, the, the voices. Can you hear me? Okay, Laura. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. So I was telling that there are different ways to evaluate uh, our impact on the environment. One, um, I explained the ecological footprint and we also have water footprint. Um, this is the research work of uh, one of our uh, researchers, uh, Ute, unfortunately, he passed away last year, very young, by the way, uh, a professor Hoekstra who developed the methodology to uh, allocate the, uh, the agua water consumption per product. So as you can read here, one can um, look at an amount of water needed per, for the production of a specific, uh, in this case, wheat, uh, sugar, tea, coffee, uh, a piece of meat to produce 300 grams of meat uh, from beef, 4,650 uh, liters of water are needed. So it's, it requires a lot of water to produce just 300 grams. So this can be a way, you know, to understand how our consumption uh, patterns can have um, an important impact on, on in terms of water consumption on this case and we can make choices uh, if we want to you know uh, have a less as a, a smaller footprint in terms of water we could definitely uh, avoid for instance to to eat uh, meat from beef because of the high uh, uh, amount of water needed for that so this, this is from the consumption consumer viewpoint. 
so that we uh, can make more responsible decisions uh, by knowing this kind of information, of course. So I'm, uh, I'm moving to uh, the second reason. So the first reason of being more so, uh, socially and environmentally responsible is this uh, ethical, uh, because we want to do the right things as individuals um, and also keep uh, the good health conditions of the population. The other reason to, uh, to be more responsible is the governmental pressure. And uh, that means that the government has uh, defined some important policies to protect um, uh, the environment, but also to protect the health of people. And for that, they, they have developed different instruments. As you can read here, we are more familiar with regulatory instruments norms, standards, laws, uh, regulations, um, environmental control and enforcement, and enforcement sorry, uh, um, rules, proced procedures. We are also familiar with economic instruments like taxes, uh, certificates of trading, uh, green public procurement, subsides, etc., subsidized. Uh, we also um, might heard info about informational instruments, eco labels, for instance, for the consumers to know uh, uh, how much water is used, how much emissions to the air, uh, dioxide carbon, for instance, is released uh, while producing a particular product. So this kind of information can be accessible in an eco label, uh, informational uh, centers. Etc. There are a large number of uh, policy instruments that can help uh, the government to implement laws and regulations for protecting the environment. There are also certifications, and uh, the corporate social responsibility uh, can be considered uh, in this category. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, Laura. Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, I heard. Yeah. Okay. So, voluntary agreements uh, in the Netherlands uh, have been uh, very successful and have a very long history. Some sectors, uh, for instance, the chemical one, has uh, signed this kind of agreements at sector le level to say that they want not only to comply with uh, um, uh, regu um uh, laws and regulations, they, uh, they want to go beyond such, uh, such uh, frameworks uh, to become, to show their uh, greener practices. So in some cases they can even get a certification or just get the recognition of being uh, environmental and socially responsible. And, um, and indeed when this, um, instruments, uh, policy instruments are well uh, uh, implemented. Um, good companies, you know, they, they, get, uh, they get right at the right attention because they become some of the best practices in their uh, sector, in the, in the network. Uh, and many companies like to, yeah, um, replicate what they are doing and become like them. So, um, you know, that is, from the business viewpoint perspective, uh, competitive advantage uh, in, in, in the market they are operating. So being green uh, page, page back for those good companies. Uh, so we are still in the, in the first uh, topic, uh, explaining the reasons why companies would like to become more socially uh, responsible, more environment, environmentally as well. And uh, the third reason is that the company Reputation is very important, you know. Um, so, um, um, and, and they would like to have a self uh, good uh, company image uh, to become, yeah, front runner in their uh, sector, as I said. And um, there are also organizations uh, uh, benchmarking them you know, comparing how they are performing in terms of 
this case, uh, sustainability. So not only the environment, but also the, the social inclusiveness and responsibilities. So, and uh, this, this table comes from uh, um, Ram, Rancom um, is a organization and they used in the past to um, Robert, Robert Kosam, sorry, Robert Kosam in the past used to rank uh, companies uh, who issued the corporate social responsibility report. And on base on that, um, this um, consultancy, Robert Kosam, um, had a list of um, companies, 26 in the past, who were, you know, openly and publicly, pu publicly um, um, uh, you know, uh, published, uh, they, they, they were uh, announced uh, in a way that other companies could see, okay, these are good references, good examples to follow. And this could also be important, you know, for investors, uh, you know, private investors of banks or organizations that uh, are looking for opportunities to, uh, in a safer way, invest their, um, their money. So the fact that companies could be uh, published, I mean, listed in this kind of rankings was very positive for them because not that we're all not only doing uh, the right thing for the environment and society but they also the time to report such activities and um, uh, send the report apply the report to this kind of benchmarking uh, so that's that's a complete um, an important uh, work uh, from the you know public relationship uh, departments of those organizations that they really wanted to communicate what good their companies were doing uh, locally uh, for the environment and for the people. So and uh, nowadays um, this Robeco Sam benchmarking changed. Now they talk about industry leaders and from 2018 and in 2009 uh, they changed the way to benchmark the organizations now there is this uh, 2019 uh, Dow Jones uh, Sustainable in, in Index uh, and, and people, sorry, companies like to be part member of this uh, uh, index. Um, and this is something that just changed uh, recently and most likely is already, I mean, announced uh, which, uh, which are those uh, good practices in terms of uh, yeah, sustainable, sustainable sustainability reporting actually because uh, they they um, they use in indifferently the term of social responsibility, corporate social responsibility with sustainability reporting. Uh, so people just uh, use either way uh, of them. So um, okay, so there are different ways uh, for companies to compare themselves. Uh, within the sectors and across sectors to say who are doing the right thing. Um, and, uh, but they are also, you know, they also do this because they are aware that since we have social media, um, individuals uh, of non-governmental no organizations, NGOs uh, who are, uh, you know, always advocating for the environment protection and, and um, you know social uh, justice are more um, they can have access in 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 a um, in more open way. So you know nowadays companies uh, which are bigger than five hundred employees um, might be entitled to. Uh, uh, to post their um, reports uh, in, in, in their web pages. And um, so that means that the information is accessible for anyone. And uh, for instance, uh, NGOs like Greenpeace, you probably have heard about this NGO, um, have, um, well, um, can, can in a way uh, comment uh, when they see that the company is not uh, doing what they, they say they are doing. So there is um, 
let's say, a more active role of uh, uh, citizens to check indeed that uh, what the company is doing is true. So there is indeed that if the, the, there is a risk of companies when they are not uh, doing what they claim they are doing, um, they can lose, uh, you know, uh, consumers, uh, because of bad reputation, they can lose uh, investors. Uh, and then at the end, um, the company can go bankrupt. So that's something that uh, definitely motivates the company to companies to be more um, yeah, open with what they are doing and, and just say if in frank to everybody because they know that uh, they can, some organizations can find out uh, the truth. So um, from more academic viewpoint, um, th this has led to uh, the development of a particular um, topic, discipline, uh, in relation to uh, how, and hello? So how, yeah. Yeah, Laura. how organizations can cope with all these uh, challenges from the management um, viewpoint. So there is this concept of corporate environment and management that uh, tell us that um, we, through this kind of management, the purpose is to reduce the environmental potential impacts from the business, from the company, and, and in a way that they can adapt products, the organizational structure and organizational processes. Um, also engage with stakeholders in, in uh, more importantly, if needed, uh, change uh, the business uh, conduct. So all with the purpose to improve the, um, the environmental performance of their activities. And there are different instruments that allow to, to uh, you know, to, to, that helps organizations to deal with the corporate environmental management. So, um, well, this is important, why? Because the sustainable development concept because it's a broader concept. It, it, it calls not only for being environmentally responsible, but also for including uh, the social and economic uh, dimensions of sustainable development. And uh, as I said, um, that um, enables uh, organizations to uh, keep uh, in good condition, in good quality, and amount the uh, resources for future generations. So, um, and this uh, concept is uh, clearly uh, um, embedded in the in the corporate responsibility. So now I'm entering more into the topic um, because um, this responsibility can be indeed divided in the three pillars of sustain, sustainable development, as you can as you can read here. So we have economic dimension, business are primarily responsible for delivering products and services. We all know that, but um, to some extent, they can also enhance uh, local uh, capacities, uh, social, cap social capital, let's say, for um, um, development, and development purpose, um, economically, socially, et cetera. And uh, in the ecological dimension of sustainable development, of course, the companies have um, the, the, the will and responsibility to uh, protect the physical environment along the entire value chain. So it's not just in the, uh, in the location where they are operating that they have you know, such responsibility. They should also try to engage uh, the suppliers and, and uh, consumer and clients in their uh, way to uh, protect the environment. Um, so yes, and, and start thinking in ways to uh, having positive impacts in, instead of negative impacts to the environment. From the social dimension, of course, um, it has to do with uh, the human rights and employee rights, but also how they promote social integration of their operations in, in their, um, across their value chain, their, their uh, own value chain. So, uh, and um, well, all that can definitely have 
a contribution to the sustainable development goals from uh, different uh, perspectives, like um, re releasing uh, people from poverty conditions, uh, uh, reducing hunger, because you know people um, might have access to uh, em employment and income, and then uh, well they can cover their basic needs uh, like uh, also uh, health care, um, education, uh, guarantee equity, or try to engage with a more gender balanced conditions, uh, have access to water, clean water energy, etc. Um, and all that fit perfectly in the responsible consumption production when uh, we discuss this topic, this term of corporate social responsibility and uh, social enterprises. So yeah, there are different interconnections among these sustainable development goals and the corporate, corporate um, uh, sustainable uh, management opportunities. There are many, um, I would say, uh, approaches to cope uh, from the business uh, perspective with these challenges. Uh, and they can go from uh, the consumer perspective, responsible consumers, uh, image of the business, um, sustainable product, great cradle, sustainable enterprises. Um, and today we are mainly focused on the image of the business, which is um, one of the approaches of sustainable management um, and also the sustainable enterprises. Um, okay, so we are getting to um, the next, the second point of the agenda. I'm looking at the time. Um, so in the second part, we said that um, corporate social responsibility uh, can be a way for companies to cope with, um, to display and to explain their, um, their efforts to be more environmentally social oriented. But what is a corporate social responsibility? And um, I can imagine that uh, in your courses, you already covered this conceptually so that you know that this is indeed a managerial uh, tool for organizations, uh, mainly companies to uh, uh, map their um, environmental, social, and economic uh, opportunities for improvement uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the short and long term. So uh, in a way, this, this, we can discuss that this is a strategic uh, aspect of a strategic tool um, um, that can help you know, companies to um, communicate uh, with uh, government and other uh, groups of interest, we call them stakeholders, group, groups of interest, um, in, uh, to communicate what they are doing, but also very importantly, to, they can use CSR to, as a tool to collaborate, to interact, to learn uh, the viewpoints from each others that can help the organization uh, to move forward in their agenda. So, and also CSR can be considered a way to build capacities towards more sustainable societies. Because it's so, I mean, the framework of social responsibility is so broad that can really fit into any type of organization um, that uh, wants to, you know, create a more um, uh, fair and inclusive societies. So the question is uh, whether this, corporate social responsibility um, um, have the expected results. Um, and that's, that's something that um, can be discussed uh, for a whole session. Um, and I just want to bring this um, way of thinking, I would say quite a conventional one, you know, from this uh, Nobel Prize of Economy, Mr. Milton Friedman, who at certain point uh, was asked, what is the corporate responsibility? And he responded, well, the, the responsibility of business is to increase its profits. But uh, well, this was uh, several uh, years ago and, and things have changed um, importantly. 
um, as I said, we have now more the voice of the society asking for uh, a more uh, for a cleaner and, and healthy environment, for instance, and um, in a way that companies realize that the responsibilities go beyond uh, only creating uh, economic benefit. They uh, realize that they can also use these um, broader responsibilities towards the environment and society as part of their business strategy, as part of their business model. And uh, when they put it in as part of their business model, I would say that's when we uh, start discussing the term of social enterprises. So you can understand that business strategy, I mean, including this kind of responsibilities in the business strategy fits very good into the corporate social responsibility, which is, uh, well, something developed at, um, at large uh, corporations mainly, uh, can also be in small companies, but well, they still call it corporate social responsibility. And when there's these social and economical values are you know, integrated in, in the business plan, in the business model, then we are now discussing a different type of uh, uh, business like uh, sustainable business, social business, green businesses. So, um, and this is where we bridge the, the two terms, uh, the corporate, the corporate social responsibility with social uh, sustainable uh, enterprises. So I hope uh, uh, we, are, we are getting uh, this important point uh, to connect the two topics. Um, I also like to show you this, um, this model from Carol's, uh, it's very famous, uh, Carol's Pyramid showing what are the type of business responsibilities. Uh, and then you can see in the base of the pyramid, the economic uh, and legal, those are, I would say, the, 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 the standard, the most common uh, responsibility used. Um, but then the organizations, when they move, what they have accomplished with all these type of responsibilities, they can jump into those that are considered more ethical and even more philanthropical responsibilities. So that's uh, an interesting way to um, map uh, what are the priorities of organizations. They always start with um, economic and legal and then um, try to cope with the legal responsibilities. But as I said, some organizations, social enterprises uh, try to integrate all of them at once which is uh, an interesting uh, phenomenon. So uh, yes, so this is um, a kind of uh, reflection. Uh, corporate social responsibility is, is relatively a new paradigm, though there are, um, there are some efforts from organizations that can be back, back uh, in the past to like a century or more than a century. I won't go into that, but uh, anyway, and uh, this corporate social responsibility uh, can be considered still a new paradigm. And, and which aspect uh, do you think that is in the priority of the CSR focus? So uh, this is kind of poll, we are not to, to do that, but I, I would like to reflect on what is this priority in the focus of CSR, the role of business in society and development, the manner in which the business is conducted in a more ethical way, the corporate governance that also engage with other groups of interest and not only with um, investors and, 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 and suppliers, consumers. Uh, the fact that this can be a way to uh, re relieve uh, poverty conditions, it can be a tool for sustainable strategies, business, government, and civil society partnerships, can be improved to, uh, you know, CSR uh, implementation. So, yeah, what can be the priority of, of, of the CSR focus? Uh, I would say that all of them play a role. They are important for organizations. And that is something that uh, each organization need to decide how, what can be the focus of CSR, what can be the priority for them. So I'm moving forward uh, just to say um, that usually 
um, companies have a way to operate that includes uh, governments because they from there them they get the license to produce and also they need to have a niche they have to be, have a market because it's a way to get license to sell but they also need a license, license to operate that is provided by regular citizens uh, the society societal members who have a say about the way this uh, company operates. Uh, otherwise, you know, they get uh, confrontations with, for instance, uh, local uh, communities where um, people are not happy on the way this company is operating. Uh, maybe it's very obvious that this company is releasing some um, um, emissions to there, some pollutants, uh, and therefore the society is complaining and they complain to the government and then the government might take action to say, well, if you don't do something, you get penalties. Uh, I mean, you don't control the problem, then you get penalties and you can even be, um, you know, you have to stop your operation. So it's very important this part and that's where um, social responsibility, corporate social responsibility uh, approach take an important role. Uh, because it's the way to give voice to these local people when they are, are unhappy with the way the company is operating. From the European Un Union uh, viewpoint, the, there are a couple of definitions that are important to, to remember here. Uh, they say the responsibility of enterprises for their impacts of society. So it's not just uh, as Mr. Um, as it was mentioned before, uh, making profit is, is, is the main responsibility. No, they should, companies show the responsibility towards society. So enterprises should have in place a process to integrate social environment, ethical and human rights and consumer concerns into their, into their business operations and core strategy, also in close collaboration with their stakeholders, with groups of interest. Otherwise, they can get into troubles. And you know, since um, 19, 2014, um, there is a European Union directive explaining um, that um, this should be part of the uh, regular operation. I mean, report on corporate social responsibilities uh, in European at EU level. Uh, any organization that is bigger than 500 employees should have this not financial statement, this no financial report, um, it, it presenting what we just discussed, how they are working uh, to, uh, to show the respect for the human rights, anti-corruption as well, and um, bribery matters, not only looking at environmental issues and social um, uh, justice, um, but also anti-corruption measures. Uh, okay. This is in, in Europe, yes. Uh, sorry, your time uh, still five minutes more. It's okay. Oh my God. Okay, I will then go faster. Okay. Thank you. So, um, well, I won't go more into the detail of this, um, but there are different organizations uh, showing, guiding the, organi uh, the companies uh, in their in the development of their reports. So. Um, and what is also important to know is that the way CSR is uh, implemented might be different per country. Some countries uh, focus more on the uh, capacities uh, development, like is the case in, in, the, in the Netherlands, while in other countries like United States, they are more philanthropical oriented. Uh, but um, well, in Indonesia, I understand that you also have this regulation um, motivating companies to uh, report their social responsibility and they are more oriented to their environmental uh, impacts. Um, so um, stakeholder management is very important. Why? Because in the past and the traditional business, there were mainly uh, employees and uh, uh, value chain um, stakeholders involved, but nowadays you can see the number of groups of interest has increased uh, importantly 
no govern, governmental organizations, the environment itself, the media, uh, communities um, should be also considered in the development of, of the uh, companies' uh, social uh, responsibilities strategies. These are the most important uh, guiding, um, guidance for reporting. You might be familiar with uh, the Global Reporting Initiative. Uh, one, why? Because it's the most common used globally. Um, and uh, well, they have the headquarters here in Amsterdam and they have been, uh, you know, very proactively promoting their, their uh, frameworks. Like um, nowadays we talk about the global report initiative standards, which are in principle more flexible uh, for, be, uh, for its use. But um, whatever um, the company decides to use, they always start with the standard 101 101, 101, sorry, um, because it, it gives indications of the quality uh, quality standards to be applied for the uh, three different pillars of, su of sustainability, the economic, environmental, and societal ones. Okay, due to the time, I will just uh, go to the next topic very quickly, which is sustainable enterprises. And that, that is the type, a typology that shows the actual um, you know, connection between corporate social responsibility and social enterprise and social venture. This comes from Neck, Bruch, and Allen uh, in 2009. They um, categorize um, the efforts of companies uh, to become, to have a social mission with a social market. And you can see that um, in the case of corporate social responsibility, companies might have an uh, economic mission, but they have a social market impact. Uh, while for social enterprises, the mission can be social, but they have still an uh, economic market impact. So they, they have, um, this, let's say, the purpose uh, as part of their um, business model but still they need to create economic value to keep their uh, operation. Um, so in the case of social res uh, responsible uh, enterprises or corporate social responsibility, they, they started, they were born from the economic uh, mission viewpoint, but they try very hard to have a social market impact. So basically connect with um, uh, sustainable uh, or green consumers. So the work of social uh, entrepreneurs, uh, I, will, I won't go into detail to that, but basically is to solve social environmental problems, be innovative, creative, and transform not only the, uh, the operation of the company, but all the whole ecosystem where they operate. There are very good examples in terms of social enterprises, uh, Moham Yunus, uh, he was a um, Nobel Prize because he started this important movement of microcredits. You might have heard about it. My Bill Drayton uh, has an important uh, foundation that supports uh, uh, social entrepreneurs and well, Skoll Foundation is also one of the great examples. I'll, I'll go faster. Um, as, as Joka, Fellows is, is one of those uh, from um, this uh, organization, from Bill Drayton. As Hoka is a great example, they have many projects around the world um, where they prove to, uh, to have a social orientation, trying to solve a specific problem, like uh, moving children from the streets in, 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 in India is a very uh, strong problem of uh, providing uh, you know, scholarships for uh, uh, new generations. Um, <clears throat> there are different funding sources for that. As I explained, microcredits uh, from um, uh, Mr. Junus is a great example. Crowdfunding and governmental programs, for instance, in the Netherlands, there was this uh, move to social that is a platform for um, companies who want to start a social venture. And in England, there have been different type of uh, policy instruments to incentivate companies to show more or to work more on this, uh, their social values. Um, but also there are 
uh, they create this, uh, for instance, the social public procurement uh, policy to um, motivate uh, their providers to, to, to become more social. It's a complete movement. The social, eco uh, social enterprise ecosystem has grown along the years. Um, it's a big movement trying to uh, cope with local uh, problems, local opportunities, and help communities to uh, be become more sustainable. Green enterprises has been also there for already a couple of decades, as you can read there, and they started trying to have a positive effects to the environment and create regional economic benefits. This is a very nice example. It's a film about, uh, you know, uh, pro, uh, the um, uh, production of uh, solar panels. You can see here, she's, she, she uh, learned how to uh, produce this. Uh, she has not a major on engineering of whatever. She uh, learned, she, that's part of, the, um, of this kind of enterprises that create capacities locally. They engage local people, they create um, uh, employment, and, and that's uh, what um, yeah, makes them very socially responsible. There are some examples, I will skip them from UT, uh, uh, teaching perspective is a great example, but I will just skip it for due to the time. Um, with this, uh, we, I did this exercise with uh, master students, try to identify what are the main difference with traditional business against, um, against social enterprises. Um, well, um, I would say the most what, some of the most important, you can read them yourself, but it's about the loyalty of employees. So in commercial type of companies, the employees are more mobile. They, if they get a higher income, well, they just change uh, uh, companies. But for uh, social enterprises, employees understand their social impact and they are more loyal to the organization. So with, uh, they don't move that easily from the organization because they have the commitment for the purpose of the company. So summing up on the social enterprises, um, well, this kind of a pool, uh, I would say, um, the social, social environmental justice are the reasons why sustainable business exists. That's true. Social enterprises as one of the components forms of sustainable enterprises. That's also true. Eco-design principles, we didn't discuss that part, but um, that's a way how designers, product designers think ab about uh, the choices they make from the raw material selection the, the way they put it, the product in the market. So they integrate the environmental um, aspects in their designs. And that's also very important for social enterprises. Among the different ways to assess environment impacts, life cycle assessment can be one of them. Very technical tool, uh, I did, we didn't uh, touch upon, but this is also true. What is not true is that the less important social impact on, of a social enterprise is community and individual capacity development. That's not true at all because that's what they are aiming to do. They really want to engage with local people to create uh, new capacities and develop them. So to sum up, this is what I tried to cover in only one hour I got. Um, so main reasons to include the environment, there are ethical reasons, there's a social responsibility, the governmental pressure, pressure from green uh, consumers as well. They are well informed. The image of the enterprise is very important. Why? Because they they want to be front runners. They want to have good reputation. And uh, there are tools for that, like uh, corporate social responsibility is one of those managerial tools. And development social enterprises can also be considered a managerial uh, tool when one has to start from the from the business plan development uh, and the business case. Thank you for your attention. Sorry, I took a little bit longer than I expected. Thank you, Dr. Laura, for your great presentation. Now we are going to a Q and A session. Okay. Uh, From uh, Muhammad Abba dan Syakura, 
how the government policies affect the behavior of the companies about the social responsibility. And the second question, could you suggest for our students what topics nowadays is interesting for their thesis about the GSR? Uh, I will go first to the last one. Uh, to be honest, I didn't get the first question, but I will, I, I will answer first the last one. Um, I think, I think um, as, as you know, academics, uh, teachers, uh, we can try to find, um, you know, some real life cases uh, that our students could uh, address, I mean, could work on, like uh, addressing some specific questions that, um, that are related to the social responsibilities of, of those organizations. Um, I, I, what I do with my uh, students is more practical type of exercises. Um, we built in a course, um, a, a, a project oriented activity. Um, I con yes, I connect the students with companies that can that have a particular question. <laughs> Sorry, Laura. Okay. So, yes, indeed. So I think we can facilitate the interaction between reality, real cases, uh, with the way students understand the topics we are teaching them in the classroom. Um, so, and as I said, I, I, in, in one of my particular courses, I have collaboration with even uh, colleagues uh, working on social enterprises already, um, who, for instance, uh, get a question from the market uh, or from one of their partners, uh, how to, for instance, deal with uh, um, new ways to generate energy in a rural area when they are so dependent on solar panels. So our students uh, look at different ways to, to cope with such uh, challenge. They do a literature review for them and they uh, come up with hopefully a solution for them that is more um, environmentally friendly, that helps the organization um, at the same time. Okay. So I think it's very important to have a good uh, connection with the private sector in this case, mm -hmm. just to help the students to grasp uh, the concepts we teach them in the classroom in their real life. Thank you for your question, by the way. Uh, and the first question is, is it is different between social and green business? Um, well, in the, in the last slides, I tried to explain that um, when it comes to the responsibilities of a organization, it's, it's like they are overlapped. Yeah, so there is no strong uh, you know, division between being uh, green, green, green uh, enterprise and being social enterprise. Why? Because um, some of these green activity, I mean, the, the green challenges that the organization is trying to cope can also engage uh, the societal members. I didn't play the movie, one of those, but in that one um, hey. that explains sustainable, sustainable enterprises, uh, they explain how they solve an environmental problem while at the same time are involving local community members. So um, it's just a way to name them. They can be green, they can be social, but what is important for this time of organization is that they try to engage with the local the, the local community to uh, to um, you know either either create new uh, employment possibilities for them or uh, you know make them part of the operation or you know uh, train them in a way that they can later on or use such uh, such information, such capacities to 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 do um, maybe uh, something similar, or just be able to have uh, to get employed in other uh, organization. 
Did I answer the question? Yeah. Uh, Bapak Aba dan Sakura want to ask more to Laura? I think it's enough. Thank you, Laura. Okay. Um, the question from uh, one of our students, Feby Dian Saputra. There's no secret that meat consumption causes the climate change, but mostly people here in my circle doesn't know that. I think being vegan is one of the key to fight that. Fight that. But I want to know, is there in your department and responsibility has that policy to be vegan or at least reduce the meat consumption? If there are any, how far the policy goes and apply? Yeah, I think that this uh, is a great question. Um, so um, indeed, I think um, what is very important is to raise awareness of our individual actions, how they impact or can impact um, our environment. Um, and it can be, you know, um, that we, in a very sim simplistic way, can uh, already contribute uh, to the good quality of the environment just by, you know, avoiding um, litter um, or, or create litter. You know, it's, it's, I have seen um, in, in also in Europe, not only in, in countries like Mexico and, or, and other developing or in development countries, um, uh, this uh, litter, this uh, solid waste spread in, 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 in urban areas, in, in rural areas, that um, is, is, I think it's is not that people do that because they are, um, uh, they do it on purpose. They, they most likely don't uh, understand that not Everything that we put on the soil can be uh, reintegrated um, to the soil uh, at the speed that some materials might do, like uh, food, right? So that's uh, organic material will be integrated in a couple of days to the soil and maybe, you know, also become a nutrient for the soil. But when we uh, put in the, in the, in the ground, um, materials like plastics, canes, etc. Uh, people might not realize that this will stay there for even years if no one come and pick them up from the soil. And that can be, you know, part of the, um, the way we need to train our population to understand that um, every single action counts. Um, in the way we consume, uh, so, uh, you know, I, I mentioned the eco labels uh, as, as one of the um, informational instruments to be used to inform uh, consumers about uh, how much was needed to produce a particular product. Uh, I don't know, um, a, a, a block, uh, a, a, a book. Uh, so if we uh, have this kind of information available uh, and we can compare, let's say when we go to the groceries, uh, to the supermarket to buy our groceries, when we can compare this, uh, the products just by looking at information in the labels, um, this can be, you know, very um, responsible uh, consumption um, approach, you know, to, to, to make this kind of, um, yeah, responsible decisions, what would make it less harm for the environment. I, I also, that was the reason I show you this uh, slide with the water footprint uh, developed by um, our colleague Hoekstra, um, because just by understanding that if you eat uh, more often meat, we are uh, using uh, a lot more of the water um, available in the environment than if we go, let's say, more uh, in a vegetarian uh, diet. So th these are this kind of information that is needed to spread among the societal members. And we teachers, uh, I think we need to 
to train the people, even not, we don't need to wait till a uh, high education level, we should start from the kindergarten, you know, to raise this awareness on how we can uh, relieve or re reduce our impact uh, on the environment. And, you know, be more active, uh, active, uh, engaged in, for instance, reforestation activities, things that are relatively easy to do for everybody, but that requires a lot of, um, yeah, um, consensual effort, uh, cooperation. I hope I respond to the question because talking about climate change, that's huge, that's big. But th then as, as citizens, as consumers, we can, we can give the first step and uh, we can collectively make the change we need. Hmm. Okay, thank you, Laura. I, I, I'm reading here some questions. Uh, yeah. I guess um, that's on purpose. In Bahasa, I will translate. How uh, CSR implementation in a culture perspective, uh, the difference between Europe or Western perspective and uh, East perspective in Asia? That's a very good question to make. Um, I uh, tried to cover it with one of the slides and I very briefly say that um, it depends pretty much how strong uh, the uh, governmental institutions are um, in place. Uh, I know that in the Netherlands, uh, who started this um, initiative of being social, corporate, the corporate social responsibility initiative came actually from the economic ministry, but they created a co coalition with uh, private sector members uh, and other groups of interest. And they um, they started, uh, as I said, from the government. And, and, and nowadays, there is this organization, Maschapelik um, Ferenguerler Undernehmen, that is, um, let's say, the institution that copes uh, with uh, helping companies to become more socially responsible oriented. And they also help them to uh, to develop their reports, train, uh, develop capacities, etc. cetera. Um, but that is a particular example here in, in the Netherlands. Um, um, in the United States, as I said, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm still referring to the North side. Um, they, um, the private sector uh, uh, doesn't rely so much on the government and therefore they uh, like to have their specific uh, programs and they are more oriented projects. Um, so, but still in the social component. I, I know from, uh, I, I don't know exactly how does it go in Asia. I know, I, I heard that you have also this um, policy uh, motivating large, large corporations to issue the no financial report namely the corporate social responsibilities uh, in a way. But what is the orientation of those, um, of those, uh, of the Indonesian companies? I cannot really say, maybe I can learn from you guys. I know that in Mexico, they are still mainly focused on the environmental problems. They try to um, integrate in their um, strategies uh, ways to prevent uh, any environmental pressures. But um, I'm, I'm very interested uh, to learn how does it, uh, how it is implemented in Indonesia, for instance. If you are more oriented, you know, to the social values or to the environmental protection. Uh, if there is a particular institution already established to train, to support or enterprises to become more social and uh, socially uh, responsible oriented. So uh, maybe some of, of our colleagues can, your colleagues can, can uh, contribute to this discussion. Maybe join research with you, Laura. <laughs> oh, that would be great. That would be uh, very, very good. Yes. Okay, uh, we have uh, two questions more. 
from uh, Ibu Dina Mustikasari. How about the mechanism of CSR audit or assurance maybe in Europe? Does it uh, exist or not? And does it have significant impact in increasing the quality of CSR program? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. As far as I know, it's not like any certification like ISO 40001 that requires an auditing process. Um, the CSR is, is not, it's a voluntary scheme, you know, so it, it still uh, companies are uh, in a way uh, obliged to report their social responsibilities when they are bigger than 500 uh, employees. Uh, since there is this uh, this directive uh, I mentioned from 2018, uh, but uh, it's, it's not, um, since it's not regulatory uh, yet uh, instrument, um, people, I mean, companies are free to decide whether they uh, in, include an auditing, auditing process or not. They basically use the uh, GR uh, reference uh, to yeah, check whether they are uh, coping with um, the standards in this case, but it's, it's not yet uh, auditable, um, uh, this kind of um, um, reporting. But what is important to say is that mainly companies use uh, their um, reporting for benchmarking, mm. um, as, as I also explained at the beginning, so that they can um, be mentioned as one of the best uh, practices. And uh, yeah, and they use it as a competitive advantage in the market and also to attract uh, investors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, the last question, I think, uh, when the company has done the GSR program, could they immediately be categorized as the social enterprise? That's a very nice question to make. Um, um, well, what I'm saying this because I, I remember we had this uh, case um, that was one in, uh, in Latin America where uh, we look at, at the practices of a um, company was in the cosmetic uh, sector, uh, you know, beauty products, and they were very social, uh, socially oriented. They have very nice programs for the, their employees, and they integrated their uh, local um, the communities around them in their operations. They really have... Uh, um, good scholarship programs for uh, children, for schools around the facilities, but they didn't uh, have any of these corporate social responsibility credentials. They were, um, I guess, not so much interested to, to be, um, uh, to use it as part of the communication strategy. They, they were really uh, committed with uh, the way they treated their um, employees and how they interacted with their communities. So they were doing so, such good work that we could say that there, there were social enterprises without actually being um, registered as a corporate social responsibility um, organization. So yeah, I think that the, that they are independent in a way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the last question again. Yes. <laughs> okay, I will translate. How um, accounting uh, accounting fields in uh, Europe related to uh, CSR? Can you repeat the question, please? Um, in what way that uh, accounting um, have impact to, uh, uh, sorry, sorry. In what way the GSR uh, implementation have impact to accounting in Europe? Yeah, uh, also a very good question. Um, I have been in this very large uh, meetings uh, organized by 
by the Green and Global Reporting Initiative. Uh, and they were uh, hoping to, you know, have this kind of impact on the accountability of enterprises that was um, a requirement even for any organization to be accountable on the social and environmental um, activities that they try to implement to, yeah, to either prevent or to protect the environment or being more social um, uh, inclusive. Um, and that's a good question to make. I, I, I don't have uh, you know, hard data to say that it has been well implemented. I know that this GRI organization were really advocating for such uh, accountability of uh, yeah, the social and environmental aspect as well. But that's that's something that um, well, if you like, we can try to find out uh, with some practitioners here. So I, I know that was a strong intention for that, but how is that uh, being implemented? Um, I, I might need myself to find out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Um, from Unita Fitria, one of our lecturer. Is there any obstacle for company doing the social enterprise disclosure, especially in Europe? How the company determine the disclosure? Yeah, I think that the main issue for especially social enterprises, which are uh, small, medium, small size, I would say, family size, uh, the main issue is the, the, the capacities that they might have in place, you know, to uh, be able to report uh, to have people just to, to collect the data and be able to, to report, uh, to make the report. Um, because obviously they are um, mainly focused on, you know, surviving at the beginning uh, to, to find the actual niche, to, to deliver the products to the consumers. And, and that can be, I think, the main challenge. So the, the, the amount of people that they have uh, within the company to, to to have this additional activity to their normal operation, let's say, even though they can be, they were born like social enterprises because as I say, they are addressing these social problems, but um, the time that they might have to uh, make a proper uh, report and, 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 you know, deliver it in the proper uh, channels might be one of the main, uh, yeah, uh, barriers for them. All right. Okay. Um, or uh, I think it is uh, the last question, Laura. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I will wrap up this uh, Q and A session. That sustainable development is a key, and then um, every single action is count. I'm. Uh, I agree with you. We are responsible responsible for what we consume, what we use. And especially for our student, um, especially for the accountant, uh, the next accountant, yeah, uh, you have a responsible for uh, the accountability of a sustainable report, for example. And we have uh, many things to do to support this agenda, uh, sustainable development agenda, I mean. Okay. Um, Thank you for all participants for all uh, the question. And then um, as a token of uh, appreciation, we would like to give you uh, the certificate uh, to Secretary of Accounting, Accounting Department. Please, uh, Dr. Wulan, your time is yours. The time is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, but Mia, Ibu Mia, moderator. And Laura, I'm sorry. Uh, I had problem with the internet when you joined with the Zoom. So that's why I, I, I'm i not uh, available at, at the moment. So actually, uh, I want to say a little bit, I mean, a kind of appreciation that it is, it's wonderful to have you as the speaker today. And then uh, as the secretary of accounting department, and then uh, 
actually I will let, tell you a little bit about accounting department. Uh, the, the accounting department vision is to become an excellent department in teaching learning, uh, research and community service in area of sustainability accounting. And this vision influenced much in creating and in developing program and activities such as the theme of this guest lecture. Other things are uh, still progressing in a way. It means uh, there are many possible activities that we will offer and propose to other university partner. Probably one of the university partner is your university, University of Penta. I hope that uh, you mentioned uh, earlier that you conduct conference as well. And then I hope that we can collaborate in academic activities in the future. For instance, in doing joint research or as the invited speakers of our next seminar or conference. And then uh, as appreciation from the department, uh, this certificate is a sign that you already here, <laughs> even though <laughs> Your physical not here, so that's why, yeah, certificate, uh, yes, at the moment, we want to share uh, this certificate to you, hang on. Mm. That's a convenience of the digital uh, time yeah. that we are living in, right? <laughs> that you just do click and uh, it's can yeah. received. Yeah, Cheap, cheaper and easier. Yes, uh, and you know, paperless. Yeah, paperless. That's why the, the spi that. spirit of that. sustainability. <laughs> Hang <Yeah>. on. <laughs> yeah. Um, we oh, also this. save a lot of, um, you know, CO2 emissions. Yeah. Because, uh, well, nobody should travel. <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> at the moment. So, so this, this is the certificate for you from uh, our department, the county department. I hope that we can continue the collaboration. It's very be uh, beautiful. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah definitely. thank you. I know yeah. that I, I touch upon very, uh, very, you know, in a very general way, uh, yeah. two, the two topics. Um, you know, it's, it's, each of them require a complete course, and you know about it. But mm -hmm. I was happy to be able to, yeah, to try to connect to the two important um, topics of social enterprises and social yes. and corporate social responsibility at once in one okay. hour. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why <laughs> this is too hard. But that's why uh, I would like to express um, the sincere gratitude to you. Uh, uh, who already share your knowledge and your experience in social enterprise and in CSR as well. That's why it's tough thing, but uh, for us, it's like, you know, learn something new is very important for us as well. Yeah. So, yes. yeah. And, yeah. And, you know, have a different perspective. Uh, I, okay. I also would love to learn from you guys because um, I, even though- There are I many have... topics, actually, there are many topics. <laughs> And then I yes. talked with, with Julie, and I'm sorry this morning, like, um, make you uh, made you in a rush <laughs> because uh, the prop the the uh, time differences. So that's why I misunderstood. I yeah. thought that was two o'clock Dutch time. Oh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's that I was already woke up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's why. And then thank you for your uh, attendance today. And thank then, you very much for the okay. invitation. I really yeah. enjoyed. Nice question, very good ones. And uh, let's let's try to build, as you said, a research agenda that we can both sides contribute to. And yeah. uh, uh, looking forward. Yeah. Thank you. And, yeah. And most of our, our lecturers already certified with CSR as well. So that's why we quite quite uh, familiar and quite understood with the GRI as well. So thank you, thank you for all. And thank then, you. yeah, thank you. And then uh, at the moment, at this moment, I will give a certificate to the moderator as well. Uh, thank you for your time and your effort, Ms. Uh, Urevia, because you make this uh, guest lecture so alive. <laughs> because everyone participated and then a very in, uh, interesting uh, discussion as well. So this is a certificate for you. 
and then hang on. Hmm. Yeah. Can you look at? Can you see it? Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. So thank you, uh, Laura, and thank you, Ibu Mia. Uh, for this case lecture, I hope that um, we can continue to collaborate for the yeah. in the in the near future. Okay, thank you is, very is much. There an I, sorry to interrupt. Is there an idea that we make a collective picture? Yeah, of course. After yes. this, after this, good. yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can also make a picture myself. Okay. okay. Nice souvenir. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Actually, most of the participants already leave because some of them. Uh, maybe uh, have other lecture, either lecturers or students. No problem, uh, I understand. Yes, for the lecture. So the the number of participants today around 211, to 211, so yeah. now it's less than 199. Yeah. So um, we will take a group picture. I will ask the administrator, hang on. <laughs> If it, that's possible with so many people at the same time, not sure, but uh, the administrator will do it. Okay. Please, everybody, uh, on your camera, camera, please. Okay. Okay, hang on everyone. And I want to say thank you to all participants. Sorry, I didn't mention before. So thank you for uh, your attendance for this guest lecture. So this is the first four, four pages. So hang on. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. Next. Okay. Yeah, the second page. Oh, yeah, there are four, four pages. Oh, four pages. Okay. Uh, yeah. Second page. One, two, three. Okay. Big smiles. Yeah, smile. Yeah. No, third page. Is someone making the pictures? Because I can only see three people. Uh, Don't worry, I will send it to you, Laura. Great. The last, the last picture. Yeah, the last one, two, three. Okay. So, picture session is end. And Laura, uh, can you give us for your PPT material, please? Yeah, sure. I can share it. Okay. Yes, okay. I will send it to um, Jorania. Oh, okay. That, that's great. <laughs> that's great. Okay. okay. Uh, by this end of session, uh, picture session. So, can I return to the moderator to close this guest lecture? <laughs> Okay, Mulan. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Laura. Okay, okay I'm leaving. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Laura. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Okay, dears. <laughs> dear. Oh, yeah. Terima kasih ya. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Grand. Thank you, Grand. Yeah. 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 Eh, hari Rabu ada lagi ya. Hari